Hello there. My name is Sebastian Straub. I'm a system engineer here at N2W. And I'll be taking you through an installation of Cloud Protection Manager, the free edition. As you can see, I already went ahead and I shared my screen. And I'm currently logged into my AWS console. I have a web server that I want to back up. I want to use Cloud Protection Manager for that purpose. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up Cloud Protection Manager on the AWS marketplace. The easiest way to do this is to search for our company name, N2W. I'm going to see all of the different versions and editions of Cloud Protection Manager. The edition we're interested in is the free edition. So I'm going to choose that. All right, well, the first decision that I'm going to have to make is which region I'd like to spin this up in. In my particular case, I'm going to choose North Virginia. But I'm going to click on the Continue button. That's going to give us a couple more options now. Region is fine. Uh, instance type T2 small, that's perfectly fine. We don't need anything bigger than that. The VPC settings, yes, you do have to make sure that Cloud Protection Manager does have the ability to get to the AWS endpoints and also has the ability to get out to the internet. Now, of course, if you have other methods of accomplishing this, GUI VPN or IP tunneling, that's perfectly fine as well. Then security groups. I'm going to let Cloud Protection Manager create a security group and open up the proper IP protocols and also the ports as well, in case we need to SSH into that machine. And then here, this is where I choose my key pair. All right, I guess we have everything that we need now, so I'm going to launch this. We're gonna take a moment to launch this instance into our EC2 console. I'm gonna give this a descriptive name, so it's gonna be easier to find. N2W Cloud Protection Manager. There we go. Now it's already running, doesn't take a long time, it takes about 60 seconds or so. While we're watching the spin up, we do have to create a role and also assign permissions as well. First off, we need to have a permissions file. We're going to get that permissions file from a knowledge base article on our blog page. So this is the page I'm talking about. What are the required minimal AWS permissions roles from CPM operation? the end of this article, you're going to find a zip file. There it is. Just simply download this and then unpack this zip file. I already did this over here in this window. Now I need a notepad as well. And the permissions file that we're looking for is all permissions. Of course, if you're looking for a specific permission, let's say backup, configuration, notification, all of that, you can pick those as well. But in my case, all permissions will do just fine. So these are the permissions that we actually need. So let's go back to our AC2 console. I'm gonna go to IAM. We're gonna create a policy. So those are all of the pre-created ones. So let's create a new one. We want to create our own policy. That's what we're gonna select. And again, I'm gonna give this a pretty easy to remember name, N2WCPM policy. All right, and that's the policy document. We're just going to control A, control C, and then paste this information into the policy screen. Validate, works fine, create that policy. All right, now we need to create a role to assign this policy file to. I'm going to create a role. Now the one that we need is EC2. And we want the first section. Allows EC2 instances to call AWS services on your behalf. That's exactly what we need. Right next, we're going to assign permissions. We're just going to grab the one that we just created into WCPM policy. There it is. Tick boxes. Review. And again, we probably want to give this an easy to remember name. So I'm going to call this into W Cloud Protection Manager. Oh. And that policy that we just created is already attached. So good. Let's create that role. And there we go. Now what we have to do is we have to assign this role to the instance that we just spun up. There we go. I'm going to select this instance and instance settings. Attach and replace IAM role. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to attach the role we just created. Apply, perfect, close. 
All right, now we're almost there. Now it's already spun up, status checks are fine. So we're gonna select this one more time. And here's our IP address, copy this. Open up another web browser and the IP address. Now, I'm gonna say your connection is not secure, but that's fine because what it actually means is that we're using a self-signed certificate to access the page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an exception here. And that's gonna take us to the page. Now, the next part is basically a security feature. We need to prove that we are the owner of this Cloud Protection Manager instance. The way we're gonna prove this is by knowing the instance ID. There we go. Control C, back to the configuration page. Control V, and click next. Now, these are the license terms and agreement. Read them carefully and click next. Now this page is interesting, it's very important because the username that we're picking here, that's actually our admin root account. So I'm gonna call this admin. Email address is completely optional, not really needed. And then we're going to pick a password. Click next. Next part is we need to choose a time zone. This is going to be important later on when we're creating schedules. These schedules are actually going to be using this particular time zone as the base. In my case, I'm going to use EST. We're also going to create a new data volume. So that's the volume that Cloud Protection Manager is going to store its configuration on, um, audit files, reporting, that sort of thing. And we're telling Cloud Protection Manager to use the instances IAM role that we just assigned. So we're good. We also have the option to use a web proxy as well. I don't use this in my particular case. I'm gonna keep that disabled. Next. Now, the capacity here, five gigabytes, that's plenty of space. You really don't need any more than that. We also have the option to choose which port we want the web server, Cloud Protection Manager, and the web portal to listen to. We also have the option to use our own SSL certificate. So we wouldn't need that exception anymore that we made at the beginning. And we're also gonna allow anonymous usage report. It's really absolutely anonymous. Click next. Now this is an important one. This is where we're going to register our account. The reason why this is important is if there are new version information, then we're gonna be uh, contacting you at this information. And we're gonna configure the system. All right, so Cloud Protection Manager was configured successfully. That's good news. Now let's click the here button. It's gonna ask us to provide the information for the root account that we chose earlier. So that's what I'm gonna type in here. Click sign in. And we're there. So everything is configured now as far as Cloud Protection Manager is concerned. Now we do need to configure a couple more things to actually start backing up our instance. The first one is accounts. We need to assign an account to Cloud Protection Manager. So choose account, add new account. Now I'm gonna call this N2W primary. And the authentication that I'm gonna use is the role that we defined a little bit earlier. I'm gonna click add. Okay, so now Cloud Protection Manager has the ability to actually communicate with my AWS using the IAM role that we configured a little bit earlier. All right, so I'm gonna click my home button again. Now we need two things. We need a schedule. When would you like to back up? And we also need to define a policy. What would you like to back up? So the first thing we're going to define is a schedule. I'm gonna click new schedule here. And I'm gonna call this my first backup. And I want this to happen every day. And I want this to happen at 2300 hours. All right. I'm going to click apply and then we need to go over policy because we need to define what exactly do we want to back up. I'm going to click new policy and I'm going to call this my first policy. I'm going to associate this with the primary account that we just created and we also need to configure it with the schedule we just created. Over here I have generations to save. So how many backups do I actually want to keep? 20, 30, I think for me, I want to keep one week 
worth of backups because we're creating a daily backup. I'm going to click apply now. All right, so now we're just missing one thing. What exactly do we want to backup? We're going to configure that using the backup targets button right here. Click backup targets and I can choose add instances and anything that's attached to these instances. So any type of volumes, of volumes that aren't attached to anything or just simply standalone volumes, RDS databases or war clusters and redshift clusters. In our case, we wanted to back up my web server, so I'm going to click Add Instances. This is going to allow me to browse through the different regions that I have access to based on the AWS account that we defined under Accounts. So in my case, I'm choosing North Virginia and choosing my web server. Click Add Selected. That's really all there is to it. So from now on, Cloud Protection Manager will start backing up, creating operational backups off my web server, and I don't have to worry about anything anymore. I do go back to policies. Now, I do also have the option to create a disaster recovery backup as well. So in this case, let's say if my region goes down and with it also goes my operational backup, I do have the ability to create a disaster recovery backup. First thing that I have to do is I need to enable this. And here I can define, well, every so often, every X amount of backups, I want you to create a disaster recovery backup into the following regions. And this can also be multiple regions as well. So in my case, I'm going to choose, because my main region is North Virginia, I'm going to choose for my disaster recovery region, Northern California. I'm going to click apply on that. And then we're really good to go. Now we're creating an operational backup and also a disaster recovery backup as well. I want to try this right now just to check if everything's configured correctly. I also have the option to click my Run ASAP button. Let's do that real quick. And click OK. So my backup policy will start in a few seconds. We can actually watch this happen on, actually watch this backup on this tab, the Backup Monitor. So here is our backup. It's running right now. It's processing also my disaster recovery as well. It's going to kind of take a couple minutes. Keep in mind, the very first backup will always take a little bit longer than any subsequent backup because we do make use of the snapshot capability, which means that every subsequent backup, we're only backing up what actually has changed. So the subsequent backups are going to be very, very quick. So really, that's all there is to it. Now the backup is processing. My web server is protected, and uh, we're also going to see you again in the next configuration window when we're going to set up how to protect Cloud Protection Manager itself as well.